of order the uh, Spring Room Board of Education meeting for September 13th, 2018. Roll call. Here. 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 Everybody please rise for the pledge. Back to the wall.
how much information, because when I was talking to you guys, you didn't have any of your notes with you. You were just telling me all of these facts, and the words that you were using were words that were about this big. So it shows that you are learning so much that, and I asked some of my papers, some of you guys here, that you said you didn't know this before you, when, when she brought them in at the beginning of the year. So that's just so exciting to think about what, how much you've learned this year. So a couple of you, can you tell me what your favorite part of the project has been? What did what was what about the exploring did you like? Um, watching them transform and um, eat and um, turn into butterflies and chrysalis. Did you actually see them eat the leaf? Yeah, yeah. They almost ate one of our chrysalis. We've, we've tried to keep ahead a little bit on substitute rates in terms of, you know, just trying to get it high enough so that we can get some subs to do some things. We just last year, we raised a lot of them over the summer, which helped a little bit, but we're still having some issues. Um, but we are 
lagging significantly behind now uh, for substitute bus drivers. Uh, we're training a lot of drivers and then they're moving on to other districts and because there's higher sub rates. I mean, we have right now one of the lowest sub rates again. Um, three years ago, we were one of the lowest and now we're back to that. So what we're gonna do is we're asking to, um, to raise our current rate, which is $14.29 an hour, up to $15.50 an hour. Um, that will still make us less than Lebanon, Carlisle, Mason, Loveland, Waynesville. Everybody is, it's, we would still be below everybody else, but I can't, it's hard for me to justify more than that because our starting salary is sixteen fifty four an hour. So I don't really want to have a sub rate that's higher than our base salary for a bus driver, but um, that dollar and 21 cents it raised, uh, hopefully will encourage some other people to to come in and, and sub. We are, like I said, we're willing to train some folks. Uh, we're willing to, you know, we've got our sign out there. We've got some people that are there. But um, right now, I think we have just one sub bus driver that's not on a route every single day, a, a regular route, because of someone being out for um, um, surgery or an illness or something. So we have one sub driver, basically, that we've got to cover absences on Friday we had seven drivers out with one sub driver to cover those seven so basically you know Michelle and the um, Ka uh, Kathy and then the, the mechanics all drove so that's all we can do right now so that's what that's where we are we're open to get the raise and hopefully that'll help us um, get some subs can we do anything to them here once we train them like if we tra train you do we do anything like you have to sub for us for three or four months we or? haven't we haven't put that in as a as a um, requirement mainly because we don't want to scare them off to be perfectly honest and most of the ones that we've trained have stayed we've had two or three over the last year and a half leave but most of them have stayed uh, because most of the ones that come here want to really want to be here. Um, the three that left were highly recruited by a neighboring school district. Okay, so it's more so just getting them. Here. Correct. If we can get them in and get them trained, because they can, they work they every day. They work every day, and and they're not subs long before we get a regular route yeah. for them. Because um, you know we do have a, a lot of uh, retired rehired drivers and they're starting to get to that point where they're not coming back now. Uh, we lost two this summer. So hopefully this, this will help offset some of that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. There's no committee report this night. We move on to 4.1 of the report. All right, um, I have several items that were submitted which should be able to get you here quickly. The first item is the August financial report. Um, it's been a very busy month as it is every year around um, all of the bills are now rolling in for all the things that have been purchased from the beginning of the school year. Um, we had about $5 million in revenue, most of it from tax advances coming in. Um, we received our final settlements in the month of September, so we won't be receiving tax advances after that, uh, besides what I can said, that will come probably in October. Um, and so we received a little over $5 million in revenue. We had about $4.5 million in expenditures. No real outliers. Um, there are some things that we pay one time a year at the release or um, all of our computers and you know, that we have those one big expenditures. But nothing um, as an outlier, we're about $190,000 under budget right now through August. So the finances are looking really good. We're about uh, $15 million in cash out, which obviously will we'll start delivering once we obviously begin to start revenue to make tax information with them. But everything looks good financially. Um, 4.2 is approval of the FY19 permanent appropriation. These are the appropriations that we submit to the county auditor three times a year. Um, we'll be bringing another one probably in February um, for any revised items that we have uh, from the permanent ones, and then we'll have the final come in June. Um, it's a requirement um, for the county auditor. Um, we also, so then we have an action because we're going to go ahead and go next to Saturday. And then we'll have the rest of it. So we need to get on those two items. I have a motion to accept 4142. So moved. Second. All second. Any discussion? Yeah, I just had a couple of questions. Were you able to get more information on the 
um, Miracle Field, like what our long term thought, like, I guess I don't quite understand because I wasn't part of it at that point. When Miracle Field came to us, where did that money, like what was our initial agreement and what is our long-term plan, what our involvement, other than it's here, obviously we support it, since we have that 28,000 sitting there. It's, it, that $28,000 is just for, for doing whatever we need to do with it in case something, you know, because the, we own the building and we own the property, so if there is something that needs to be redone, that's really what that $28,000 is for. Um, kind of an upkeep type of thing. I mean, eventually it's going to need a roof and things like that. But we actually, you know, we the facility was built using their their money, but it's you know it's our property. It's it's our job to keep it up. So you know, every year we make sure we you know we we uh, winterize it so that pipes don't break, things like that. But if there are things that are broken, need to be fixed, we upkeep the building. So that's that's what it's there for. So as they expand, that money is all coming from the Y. Correct. And our money that we see here is coming from the, the is coming to do the upkeep of the building or the land in that area. Correct. Gosh, that's what I didn't understand. Yeah. Okay. That's how I didn't know if this was used to expand the actual project there. No, they the, all that money came from them. They they've done all that that nice playground that they built yeah. and all that. That was they got donations and raised all the money for that on their own. That makes sense. That makes sense. My only other question was, with Panther Express, and I guess I'll ask for us this year, but I hope we're situated, <laughs> is our intention, attention, intention ever to, like what kind of thing would you be looking for if a group were to run that? Because I know you said the reason that we haven't done anything with it is we don't have a group that would do something. Just so that, I mean, it's a $42,000, I know I asked about it last year too, I'm just curious if there is a group that wants to do something with it. What kind of group would, or what kind of thing would you be looking for? We have discussed it with a couple of different individuals the last two years. Um, one of the, the main issues is that in the past it, they always sold food, which that you know that's a, a, a difficult with, with the cafeteria. That's you know as far as what you sell, nutrition, and the nutrition laws that are there. Um, and then you can start to have a lot of money changing hands. Um, so, you know, that's a lot of, that is a lot of time and responsibility for a staff member to take that on and, and have that budget to look after. Um, so, you know, really, as far as what we're looking for is someone that's really ambitious and wants to take it and run with it. Um, We've looked at trying to combine a couple of groups um, with some clubs and some of our special needs students and try to use that as some job skills training. Um, that was a goal that we were trying to get through and we weren't able to, again, find some support or you know, the staff volunteers that it would take in addition to their, their everyday duties to, um, to, to, to sustain it because outside of food, you know, what items you're going to sell that's going to bring in student business also. That, so that was um, one of the things we were looking at. You know, do we, we looked at some other schools that have some spirit shops. Um, and then that, you know, that's another topic of conversation. Um, so really need somebody that's really ambitious and wants to take it on and okay, present something to us and we'd be more than happy to get it get it up and running, um, but it's not as simple, I guess, as maybe it was in the past. That, that completely makes sense. So if there was like a business class that Correct. wanted to take on a project to learn the ins and outs of business type of thing, you'd be looking at something like that, or like you said, especially, I mean, we actually have a, a donors choose project that they're doing using a cricket machine, making stuff, and I think it's for the special needs, class, I think. That I mean, that I think is small scale to begin mm -hmm. with. Um, she was bought the cricket machine to begin with, but that is to teach the kids the value of the dollar and making things. So that's very small scale, but you're thinking if somebody had a bigger scale project for that. Correct, because you know, I'm sure we could do anything for a week or two, but anything that's going to sustain long term 
now you're talking about inventory and it being self-sufficient and you know running itself and again who is being accountable for whatever funds are coming in and out and that's that's a big responsibility mr krieger's class used to do that and when they did they sold pretty much all food items was right. my understanding and I, and I heard that before i heard that some of the ideas that have been kicked around um would affect possibly the athletics and the athletic boosters and how much money they raise and then the correct food, um, then it gets into a thing with the food service and then all. so I know that we've heard, I've heard that in the past, that several of the ideas of stuff that would actually bring in money and make people want to buy then affect other people who are already selling things in the district too, so that was another thing. That was a concern because, you know, I'm sure home basketball games, volleyball games, that we could sell some spirit wear, things like that. Now you're yeah. putting yourself against other, you know, community support that, you know, and, and so that becomes a little bit of a touchy subject also. So if we were to, if, there's, if there was barriers into all of these different things, what do we legally, what are we able to do with $42,000? Like what does it, what do we need to keep that within the same bucket of spending? Well, how, how it works now is it's set into a fund, and you have to fill out these purpose statements. And it basically says, this is the purpose of our fund, and this is what we're going to do with the money. Well, once that dissolves, that money still has to stay in that cash fund until another entity within the district is willing to start up a new club. They'll do a new purpose statement and say what this new club is going to do. And as long as they spend the money within those guidelines, they follow the, the rules of the uh, fundraising process and stuff. And that money will just stay in there and the new club can take it over. It's just, we had talked about, you know, um, the special needs were wanting to do some things. And we originally were like, well, maybe we can marry the two. Um, but we kind of separate based on the fact that they're going to really do something strategic with this. I know I had to talk to Kyle yesterday and he was talking about, you know, some of the past kinds of financial literacy and things, some of the tasks that they're doing, um, they're doing at the high school to maybe try to work on something that he basically said it would be like a full-time job managing that store because it would be like an actual, like a store of some kind. And then what they sell in there and what they do. So some of them have to be in there every few years. And then, so I think it's logistically it's just trying to figure out what type of classes that you know and how it would all work and who would run it and that's another thing to a teacher would be there. So but does the purpose the around it say it has to be a store so like another student was, um no it doesn't say it has to be a store um I, i'd have to go back and look at what the purpose statement originally like i said it's been sitting for several years it's right been touched, um in several years so we'd have to go back and look at because even if that was a purpose then it can be changed it can be changed and the purpose can change and all the, the basic same premise of what they're doing, trying to raise money to for you know for the students and for I mean that the basic premise of all student activities are gonna remain the same. It'll be what's the purpose that we're gonna do now going forward. So it can change over time. I'm just curious if we can't we, we, if we need to look at it differently.
when I look at spending $15,000 of PTO dollars on desks, I know that those are specific desks that the fifth graders are asking for, so that was a request from the principal, from the teacher, so that was why that was being spent. But I'm hopeful that we as a district can be providing stuff like that and our PTOs can be doing the fun stuff and not providing the desks. I feel like we should be providing the boring desks and chairs and stuff like that. So I know that there was some specifics. Um, they said that the desks that they have are super heavy and they're just not conducive to moving things around for their learning. Um, so I'm, I support the PTO is giving the school what they're asking for and that's what the PTO, you know, I fully respect that. I just think that as we're doing our long-term planning, I want to make sure that we're putting into our budget. If there's an issue with some things within buildings, that we put that into our budget and make sure that we're meeting those needs with our general fund money so that the PTOs aren't covering that. And I completely agree. And actually, I talked to us, and we've actually talked to a few different cabinet members about this, that for our October forecast, they were to suggest that we raise our capital needs budget because it's just not enough. We have so many capital needs and so many unmet capital needs struggle to try to to make everything work um, within the budget, to try to within that budget, and it's just becoming very difficult. So hopefully that will be supported when we do the project forecast to up his capital needs budget. So we can take care of some of these next The other thing was just I was looking into the donors choose that I mentioned earlier with Mrs. Dennison, the students start their own business. And I just thought what an amazing I don't know who this teacher is, but does anybody know what grade level she's at? She's high school. She's high school. It's the job it's skills class that we were Job at. skills? Yeah. Special needs or mm -hmm. typical? Okay, so special needs. What an amazing, amazing program to have where you're teaching the real life skills of the students. I'm a crafter, so a cricket machine, and you're making little paper cutouts of things. So that the students are able to actually make them and see their product and then sell them. So I don't know who they're gonna sell them to, but what a cool, cool thing that they're able to actually be part of all of the process. So I just, when I saw that, I wanted a neat thing to put out there for donors choose and clearly she had funded pretty quickly. So I love to see things like that where it was somebody that was passionate about something and she had a class behind it. So I just, I think that donors choose, I know the STEM for the, and there's one for STEM and then also the sensory gardens got a lot of donations through donors choose. So teachers have just done an amazing job of being creative when there's things that we haven't been able to fund and they want for their classrooms, they're getting done. <laughs> and it's amazing. So that's all.
we need to require it here at Spring Rural Schools. Howard were also part of this, and they will serve as a representative with the Ohio Revised Code so that all of these schools will have one document that will be submitted to the Ohio Department of Education to meet the statutory requirements uh, and for all Southwest Ohio schools that are part of that. Okay, is there a motion to accept five more? So yeah. Second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Yes. 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 President, uh, tonight, Mrs. Hester has a lengthy report. Yes. Human resources and seeking your people on multiple reports this evening. Um, the first of 6.1 that you all have is the traditional uh, personnel report. It's more lengthy this month um, due to all the supplementals that need to be approved for the year. 6.2 is the extended service time report. Um, as I Shared between shared SI and equipment. Yes. And then 6.6 is approval for consultant contract or Leslie Nelly as our math coach for Dennis, five points, and Okay. Is there a motion to accept 6 1 through 6 6? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Second. Second. Roll call. Yeah. Logic. 
Yes. Yes. Abstain. <laughs> I have for you a listing of 22 novels for approval. Um, as you know, last spring uh, our board approved um, several new genre-based classes for our junior English classes, and those have started up and are going over very well. Um, you will see of the 22 books on the list for approval, 20 of those are for English 3. One is for a new class uh, that is a mythology elective, also um, adopted as a new class for this school year, and one is a memoir um, for a special education English language arts class. So all novels are for English language arts classes. If you have any questions over any of these, I will be happy to answer. Is there a motion? Second. Second. These were done in a little bit different process. Typically, I have four readers on every book. I did not have upwards of 90 readers. So what we did is we posted these to the website. Um, they have existed out on the website for approximately two and a half months um, with a request for any member of the community to contact me with any questions or discussion of any of the novels. This did go out via social media and our webpage as uh, district notes. Um, from Mr. Marshall, and I did not have any um, feedback from any community members at all on any of the 22, which was a little bit disappointing because I love to talk about books, but we did use a little different process due to the volume of the books. Roll call. Yes. 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 Under the uh, Director of Special Education, uh, reporting tonight, <laughs> Ms. Hill. Good evening, members of the board. I am seeking approvals for student services and private contract placements. Uh, you will see in the attachment. Is there a motion to accept A1? Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bad. Yes. Good. Yes. 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 And our executive director of district operations, Mr. Pennell. Mr. President, members of the board, for your consideration tonight, I have two of our normal uh, process approvals for the year. Uh, 9.1 is approval of our resolution and payment of in lieu of transportation. Um, and 9.2 is approval of the out of state trip that the band goes on pretty much every year. It's the Band of America um, competition in Indianapolis. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. It's almost it's almost exactly what it was last year. Is I mean, it? it's yeah, within two or three people. Uh, yes. Lock in. Yes. Good. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Members of the board, we move now to bed four member reports. I'll be congratulate you at 55 minutes for that section tonight. And with that, uh, we do have tonight uh, four uh, building leaders that will have little updates in the building. But first, uh, obviously. Uh, Um, you know, first of all, congratulations to everybody for the start of another year. Um, again, it's, it seems like it's off to a, uh, a fast start, and um, all good things are coming to my ears, so that's great to hear. Obviously, huge congratulations on this neighborhood card. Um, I got a little phone call right before I got here um, <laughs> from somebody sitting at this table talking about that. So that was extremely exciting to hear about. Um, you know. It says so much, I think, about our community, our district, staff, faculty, um, administration, students, parents, you know, business leaders, basically everything you said on the phone call. I mean, it, it, it takes everybody, I think, to achieve what's been achieved. Um, you know, the bar is very high. I will say the one thing that, that um, feeling I didn't have 
I was surprised. I, I didn't feel surprised at all hearing that grade. I think at this point, um, you know, that's kind of the expectation for this district. It also didn't surprise me that we beat out Centerville and some other districts. But you know, again, I think um, almost there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's incredible, but again, not surprising to me. So I'm, you know, how, how can you not but feel very proud for everything this district's accomplished? And uh, you know, again, very. Very nice to see, and it just means that we need to keep raising the bar every year. And it's, it's nice to celebrate, but at the same time, it means we need to be better next year. So, congratulations to everybody. Thanks. I echo the remarks for that. Was very well said. Um, I think all of the donations tonight were amazing. It just shows where our community is at, and I think that that also is reflective of what makes our community our community and us able to do the things like we were with our students today um, and what's happening over in the sensory garden and if you drive around Springboro in the evenings you see students and families and staff and administrators across all campuses pretty much so I just that's the thing that has stood out to me over the last month as I'm up here for whatever reasons is just the involvement and the commitment that we have from people from janitors that are literally here at all hours supporting the groups that are here at all these funky hours to the people taking pictures and um, coaches and everybody else. So um, I think it's all needed in order for us to have the strong district that we do. So that's everything I had to say. I won't add too much. Uh, you guys have done a great job covering it. So just would also extend my congratulations to, uh, to everybody district for that, that great news we got today. It was fun. We had a panel discussion this morning uh, where we were talking about, uh, Mrs. Cook was there as well, we were talking about uh, standardized testing. And so I was reading last night, just happened to come across the report cards were going to come out this week. So sure enough, there they come this morning. So it was, uh, it was great uh, great news, but to Mr. Hibbs' point, you know, not surprising at all because we've got a great uh, team here. And, and excited against the community as well, great community. And so uh, just job well done. But uh, rest our worlds and I'm sure we won't. So uh, thank you to our uh, presentation, the class presentation. That was a great one. I always like when you get things like this to take home. It's fun. Uh, so I'll go home and plant some, some milkweed. Um, but you know, I just uh, really you can tell how engaged the students were. Uh, it was evident that they really uh, they really bought in uh, and just really appreciate uh, that Mrs. Page was able to inspire that passion. In them. So that was that was great to see, and uh, yeah, just uh, off to a great uh, start to the school year. I hope everybody's uh, enjoying it, and thank you to all the people that, that donated as well. There's a lot of very generous gifts. In there. That's it. Uh, echoing what other people said, congratulations to uh, the central office and all the staff members for the grade that we got. Uh, the children that were here that was wonderful, also. Um, I apologize to Carrie down at the elementary, uh, Clear Creek, because the first day I picked up my grandchild, I didn't know what the heck he did to pick him up. So I got out to help him get in the car, and the teacher that was there, who it was, kind of looked at me like, you know, what are you doing? Yeah, but then one of the other teachers down the way was motioning, saying, don't say anything. <laughs> so she politely told me that they put him in, and then I have to drive over there and park and ask him up. Luckily, he can do it himself now, so. But anyway, that's, that's it. That's it. I don't like that. I did. <laughs> I heard, um, I think one of our majors might have yelled at the president of our school. Of course. <laughs> she just kind of looked at me like, what are you doing? And when she looked at me, I said, am I not supposed to? So, and then I double checked it with your wife down at the other end of the room. <laughs> So we have some building leaders here tonight that are going to give just a real brief 
uh, real brief uh, present, uh, presentation, just a couple of things about what's going on in their building. And uh, here, since your building provided a little bit of excitement for our board president, <laughs> why don't you start? Well, we start them off right. You got to train them. Doesn't yeah. matter who it is, you got to train them. Um, well, I'm still training me. Yeah. <laughs> We've started off real smooth. Um, I can't believe it's almost the middle of September already. Um, we had limited turnover, so the new folks that joined us are quite amazing. We've got some folks, uh, kindergarten, some assistants, as well as um, special ed. So that's exciting. Um, you wouldn't even tell that they're brand new. They fit in so well um, and have been welcomed by an amazing staff at Clear Creek. Um, sensory Gardens already been highlighted. We'll continue to highlight that and look forward to the board meeting being moved there in November. So that would be exciting. Thanks. Thank you. Crazy. Uh, I'm just going to fall right into that. Um, we've had a great start. I, mean, I can't tell you, it, it's like the kids didn't even leave us. And I want to give a huge shout out to Carrie Porter because those second graders coming in, I and Jamie can attest to it. I mean, you would have thought they were already in our building. They just came in so smooth. I mean, it's been a smooth start, really. Um, and we're real, real excited because going into the classrooms, we're seeing the kids engage, like you mentioned. I mean, it is awesome to see the learning happening so soon. The teachers are excited. The activities are going. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, I had Mrs. Pelletier jumping into gym class today, and she's hopping through the hoops with the kids. So when that's happening, you know we're on the right track. So we're super excited for this year. Rob? Um, the high school, we're off to a great start. There's such Huge. positive energy in the building with the student body. Um, a lot of great student leaders, um, which we had nine national uh, merit semifinalists, which is a record. Um, so that's very impressive. Our yearbook won the Gallery of Excellence Award again for the third year in a row. Um, and then this morning we had our AP seminar um, class, which Mrs. Cook can give a lot of details on that if anybody wants them. Um, but that was a, a very uh, neat experience this morning. So um, that's it. And to finish off. And with that preview, I will give you a little more information. You did vote last year, and we appreciate it, to adopt the AP Capstone program, which is a diploma program, and we got to see that group of uh, young people in action this morning. Mr. Belange, Mr. Schreyer, and I had the opportunity to be on a panel and answer questions of, of those students, and they did an absolutely wonderful job coming up with thought-provoking questions, which is part of their job as um, an AP seminar class. That is the first of two classes next year. We hope to see 100% of those students who are participating in seminar and the research class next year. And along with those two courses and other AP classes, we hope to see them graduate next year with an AP diploma. So that is part of a diploma program. So they're working in their first step. You did um, sponsor two teachers to go to training this summer to learn how to work with our students in this program. So we appreciate your support on all of that. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. Just a couple of things to end the board meeting. First, um, we did send an email, like we apologize, but uh, Ashley wanted to see if I could see if you guys know already. Tomorrow night, uh, there is going to be a dedication ceremony for the scoreboard, because that was a group of different sponsors and what we had at the first football game. There will be a meet and greet from 5.30 to 6.30 in the northwest corner of the stadium. And at 6.40, we are going to be on the field with a very brief um, introduction of the sponsors and the board members that could be there. Uh, obviously, we'll be there for the little meet and greet, but we'll be having there to shake hands. Uh, David, oh, you'll be there. Wanted to check maybe you know whether or not you'll be there. Okay. Lisa? I'll you know. Okay. Mr. Good. I'm also going to. <laughs> if you could please let us know first thing tomorrow morning for the, for the group. Thank you so much. In front of you is a magazine. Uh, it's the Dayton magazine um, from the, I believe it's from the Dayton Chamber of Commerce. But our school was highlighted as one of the best schools in the region. And what they highlighted in that magazine was our high school junior ROTC program. It's on page 53. That is for your uh, use and, and to review. A reminder for you and everyone here, our October board meeting, the regular meeting on October 11th, will be held at the Warren County Career Center. Uh, there will be a few extra things that night uh, to showcase some of the students, uh, obviously our students, and we'll send more details of that with the dinner before the board meeting and then a tour and so forth. And then, uh, and, uh, I'll, I'll pick the, uh, <laughs> um, the, 
regularly scheduled November board meeting will be a clear break. You're taking, you know, you can ask you know, your show's on the road, we're going to be in t shirts, <laughs> but a clear create the presentation will be in the sensory garden. Um, teachers and students will be there to be able to showcase what they're doing there. The final thing I have again, um, I said that the recording at 5 30 this afternoon, so many of you have already said tonight, 28 schools in Ohio received an A rate on the first report card, the report card for this year, and we're one um, in this region of Ohio. Oakwood, Delbrook, Waynesville, and us, the only schools. Um, it is a community celebration. It is something because of students, because of parents, because of staff, because of teachers, administrators, and community leaders that this has happened. And thank you as leaders of this board for allowing these things to happen so our students can be successful. With that, Mr. President, we're ready to move into executive session. No action to To consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, Discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official. Is there a motion to move into executive session? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Yes. 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 